So, we will consider a second example of exact solution of the Navier-Stokes equation through something which is very important in fluid mechanics. This is called as squared flow. Consider two parallel plates with relative motion that means let us say that the bottom plate is stationary and the top plate is moving towards the right with a velocity u1. The gap between the plates is small and the flow is fully developed. Now you may ask a question that why are we studying this? Have you ever seen somebody pulling a plate on the top of another plate? Uh, I mean very rarely, I mean I have never seen this kind of a situation. So, if you now try to uh, guess that still even though you have a more practical situation of a pressure driven flow which is the hagen poiseuille or plane poiseuille flow, the flow between two parallel plates is plane poiseuille flow that we have just studied. Then why we are studying this squared flow? I will come to this answer in a moment and this answer is very important. See very often we teach our students something without motivation. We give an example well we consider two parallel plates, one plate is moving, another plate is stationary but students are not able to find out any relevance. So, it is important, it is important that students uh, should try to get a feel of why this kind of flow is important. Let us try to find out a velocity profile for this. So, uh, as usual for fully developed, so we consider steady flow, incompressible flow, two dimensional flow. Okay. Now, for fully developed flow, Let us fix up our x and y axis also that will help in solving the problem. For fully developed flow, you have v equal to 0 and x momentum equation zero is equal to minus dp dx plus mu d2 u dy2 so d2 u dy2 is 1 by mu dp dx Let us call this as section 1, let us call this as section 2. Example, when P1 is equal to P2. So, dp dx, if this is the length of the channel, is equal to P2 minus P1 by L, this is equal to 0. This is called as pure quiet flow, that means there is no pressure gradient which is acting on it. Quiet flow can also have a pressure gradient acting on it, but if there is no pressure gradient acting on it, it is called as pure quiet flow. So, for pure quiet flow, you have this is equal to 0, that means du dy is equal to a constant c1 
that means u is equal to c 1 y plus c 2. What are the boundary conditions? At y is equal to 0, u equal to 0, this is the first boundary condition. And second boundary condition at y equal to h, u is equal to u1. So, at applying the first boundary condition at y equal to 0, u equal to 0, that means c2 is equal to 0. And second boundary condition at y equal to h, u equal to u1. So, c 1 is u 1 by h that means the velocity profile is u is equal to u 1 into y by h. So, velocity profile is linear, if the velocity profile is linear what is the rate of strain or rate of shear? The rate of strain or the rate of shear is what is d u d y. So, what is d u d y? d u d y is u 1 by h. So, by specifying the value of u 1, you can impose a particular value of shear. So, this is known as shear driven flow. Just like you have pressure driven flow, this type of flow is also important and this is known as shear driven flow. So, the quet flow is a typical example of something which is called as shear driven flow. Now, what do you get such an example? Let us say that in industry we commonly get shafts which transmit power. Now, there is an outer casing within which the shaft is supported and that is called as bearing. So, this is the outline of the bearing. Now, to avoid metal to metal contact between or material to material contact in general between the shaft and the bearing, there is a lubricating oil that is kept in the gap. So, this lubricating oil is a thin layer, it is a very narrow gap and then the shaft is rotating with a particular angular velocity, whereas the bearing, the is stationary. If the gap between the shaft and the bearing is very small, this curvature effect can be neglected, then these two can be thought of approximately as two parallel plates and one plate relative moving relative to the other. So, the fluid dynamics in bearings, if you want to understand that, then the quet flow can be one of the very basic mechanisms which helps us to understand this. There is also another motivation and that motivation is uh, very, very subtle. So, if you recall that what is the velocity profile in a pressure driven flow. So, if you consider the previous example, what was the velocity profile? It is a parabolic velocity profile. Now, a small part of a parabola is like a straight line. Let us say there is a biological cell which is sitting on the wall of this channel and we are interested to study the force exerted by the fluid on the cell. Then very close to the wall since we are considering only a small part of the parabola, we can linearize it and we can consider a linear velocity profile that is acting on the cell depending on the dimension of the channel. Of course, if the channel itself is of the dimension uh, uh, comparable dimension as that of the cell, then no question of this considering this small linear part. But let us say the channel is 1 meter and the cell is 10 micron. So, for all practical purposes this 10 micron velocity variation, velocity variation within this 10 micron is approximately giving a linear velocity profile. So, a linear velocity profile or a shear driven flow is very practical, it is not always a question of one plate pulled over the other, 
that the philosophical perspective of creating a relative motion between the two plates that you have to consider. So, the velocity profile if we draw now. this is u 1 and this is h. Now, so far so good, but what happens when both pressure gradient and driving shear acts on the system that plates are moving and p 1 minus p 2 is non 0. Let us work out a problem highlighting such a case. So, example 2, please open page number 7 of your lecture notes and you will find example 2 consider steady incompressible fully developed flow of water at 20 degree centigrade between two horizontal parallel plates. with the gap between the plates is 2 centimeter. A constant pressure gradient d p d x is equal to minus 900 Pascal per meter drives the flow. In addition, the upper plate moves with a uniform speed whereas, the lower plate is stationary. Find the velocity of the upper plate, what should be u 1? So, that number 1 q is 0 and number 2 tau wall at y equal to h is equal to 0. The viscosity of water at 20 degree centigrade is 10 to the power minus 3 Pascal second that is given. So, this is y and this is x. So, let us work out this problem. So, in this problem you have both driving pressure gradient as well as a shear. Now, for steady two dimensional fully developed incompressible flow all those assumptions being valid. Let us write the governing equation. So, solution. What is the governing equation? 0 is equal to minus d p d x So, this now we integrate. So, d 2 u d y 2 is equal to 1 by mu d p d x and we know that d p d x is a constant. So, now if we integrate it d u d y is equal to 1 by mu d p d x into y plus c 1 and u is equal to 1 by mu d p d x y square by 2 plus c 1 y plus c 2. How do you get c 1 and c 2? We use the two boundary conditions. Boundary condition 1 at y is equal to 0, u is equal to 0. This is the no slip boundary condition. So, you have C 2 equal to 0. Boundary condition 2 at y equal to h u equal to u 1. So, you have u 1 is equal to 1 by mu d p d x h square by 2 plus C 1 h. 
that means C 1 is equal to U 1 by H plus 1 by, sorry minus this is minus 1 by mu d p d x into h by 2. Okay. So, u is equal to 1 by mu d p d x 1 by 2 mu d p d x into y square then c 1 y minus y h plus u 1 y by h. So, you can clearly see that this satisfies the boundary condition at y equal to 0 u is 0 and at y equal to h also u is 0. So, this is the velocity profile and a very interesting thing you can observe. In this velocity profile you have one part which is purely because of the pressure gradient and another part this is purely because of the shear and the resultant is just the algebraic sum of these two. Why it is so? It is so because this equation is a linear equation. So, if u equal to some u pressure driven is a solution and u equal to u shear driven is a solution then u equal to u pressure driven plus u shear driven is also a solution of this equation. Okay. Now, what is asked from us is not u, but what is q or if q is 0 then what is u 1? u 1 is not given. So, let us calculate what is q. So, q is equal to now, what is q? Integral u dy, this is q per unit width from y equal to 0 to y equal to h. So, 1 by 2 mu d p d x plus u 1 y by h dy from 0 to h. This is q by width. So, q by width is equal to 1 by 2 mu d p d x to h cube by 3 minus h square by 2 sorry h cube by 2 right. plus u 1 by h into h square by 2. So, now this is minus this is 3 into 2 is 6 into 2 is 12. So, 1 by 12 mu d p d x into h cube plus u 1 h by 2 and this is equal to 0. So, what is u 1? u 1 is minus so, sorry plus 1 by 6 mu d p d x into h square 1 by 6 mu d p d x into h square. So, if you put the values of this then this will come out to be minus 60 meter per second.
the second part of the problem is what should be u so that tau wall equal to 0 before that how is it possible that you are having a pressure gradient but still the flow rate is 0. See physically what is happening in this problem is that there is a driving pressure gradient which is minus 900 Pascal meter. So, that is trying to drive the flow in the positive direction. If u1 also drives the flow in the same direction then there will be a net flow, but in this physical problem we are seeing that u1 is coming out to be minus 60 meter per second that means u1 is in the opposite direction. So, there is a flow rate that is being attempted to be created by the pressure gradient in the forward direction and the shear in the negative direction and some total is coming out to be 0 for this u is equal to minus 60 meter per second. Okay. Now, wall shear stress, wall shear stress as we have discussed is mu du dy and our condition was given that at y equal to h this will be 0. So, what should be u1 such that at y equal to h tau wall is 0. So, mu du dy tau wall at y is equal to h is mu du dy at y is equal to h. So, u is given. So, what is du dy at y equal to h? One by two mu dp dx into two y minus h. plus u1 by h at y is equal to h. So, 1 by 2 mu dp dx into h plus u1 by h this is equal to 0. So, u1 is equal to minus h square by 2 mu dp dx. The why this is 0? Because it is given that the wall shear stress at y equal to h is 0. So, this is this u1 is 180 meter per second. Okay. Now, we have worked out a few problems. The next case that we will consider is a special case which is called as thin film flow. Thin film flow under fully developed condition. Let us say that there is an inclined plate and the plate is inclined at an angle theta with the horizontal whereas the gravity is acting in a vertically downward fashion we set up the x and y axis such that x axis is along the inclined plane and y axis is perpendicular to that and there is a thin liquid film 
with a flat interface. If it is a curved interface, it is a significantly more complicated problem that we will not take up in this particular lecture. So, this is a flat interface. There is a liquid and there is air and this film thickness H is much much less than the length L of the incline. So, now let us write for that for fully developed state the for fully developed flow V is equal to 0. x momentum equation. So, this is the consequence of continuity. x momentum equation left hand side is 0. minus d p d x plus mu d 2 u d y 2 and there will be an additional body force which is. So, this is so if this is g along the incline it is g sin theta and here it is g cos theta. So, plus rho g sin theta. Fundamentally there is a problem with this equation and we need to consider the y momentum. First of all p here is a function of both x and y all right, but if the variation if the height h of the domain is much much less than L then the pressure variation within this thin film is much much less than the pressure variation along it and therefore, in that case p is not a function of y. Otherwise, if this film is a thick film then p can be a significant function of y. So, p is not a function of y, p is a function of x only and u is a function of y only. So, you can write d p d x is equal to mu d 2 u d y 2 minus rho g sin theta. So, this d p d x this is a function of x only and this is a function of y only. This is a constant, so it can be absorbed in either function of x or function of y. So, this is plus right. Now, a function of x is equal to a function of y if each is equal to a constant. So, we can say that implies each is equal to constant. So, if you say that it is a constant and then we give these two sections name as this is 1 uh, sorry this is 2 and this is 1. Then this d p d x is nothing but p 2 minus p 1 by L. Now, here both p 1 and p 2 are p atmosphere this means d p d x is equal to 0. So, here the film is falling 
totally by the effect of gravity. So, you have mu d 2 u d y 2 I am writing in the in a new page. This means d 2 u d y 2 is equal to 1 by mu minus 1 by mu rho g sin theta. So, if we integrate it twice then d u d y is equal to minus 1 by mu rho g sin theta y plus c 1 and u is equal to minus 1 by mu rho g sin theta y square by 2 plus c 1 y plus c 2. Now, what are the boundary conditions? Let us come to this figure once again. Let us write the boundary conditions here. First boundary condition is pretty clear at y is equal to 0, u is equal to 0, this is no slip. Then at y is equal to h, what is the boundary condition? See at y equal to h, there should be a continuity in shear stress. So, you can write that mu liquid d u d y at the liquid is equal to mu of air into d u d y air. Okay. Now, because mu air is much much less than mu liquid. we can say that d u d y in the liquid side which is our domain is roughly equal to 0. So, very often students use this boundary condition without understanding where from it comes. It, na, it comes from nothing but the continuity of shear stress across the boundary, across the flat interface. So, when the viscosity of air is much much less than the viscosity of liquid then that boils down to that the d u d y in the liquid must be very very small or approximately 0. So, if that be the case let us note down the boundary conditions here again. Boundary conditions number 1 at y is equal to 0 u is equal to 0 that means c 2 is equal to 0 number 2 at y equal to h d u d y equal to 0. That means, 0 is equal to minus rho g h sin theta by mu plus c 1. So, c 1 is equal to rho g h sin theta by mu. So, u is equal to minus rho g sin theta by mu into y square by 2 minus y h. This is the velocity profile. So, you can cl clearly see that the velocity is driven by this rho g sin theta that is the gravity effect. This is the typical gravity driven flow. We will consider another example where now so far we have considered the use of Cartesian coordinate system, but another example where cylindrical coordinate system is important and that is an example which refers to one of the very important applications in engineering that is pipe flow. So, 
we will consider steady laminar incompressible fully developed flow through a circular pipe this is called as hagen poiseuille flow So, I will just talk about the only subtle changes from the rectangular to the Cartesian system. See for the pipe, the convenient coordinate system is the r theta z. So, sorry this is z, this is r and you have the theta. But because of the theta symmetry or the azimuthal symmetry, instead of x y system, it is z r system. So, u will be replaced with v z and y and v will be replaced with v r. So, for fully developed flow, you have v r is equal to 0. and the z momentum equation left hand side will be 0 for fully developed flow right hand side this is the only change because of the cylindrical coordinate system the d 2 u d y 2 will become 1 by r d d r of mu r d v z d r. Okay. So, this is the only change in the form of the derivative because of change of coordinate system from Cartesian to cylindrical plus minus d p d z that will remain as it is. So, for mu equal to constant 1 by mu sorry 1 by r d d r of r d v z d r is equal to 1 by mu d p d z. So, this is a function of r only, this is the function of z only. this implies that each is equal to constant. Equal to C say. So, one by R D D R of R D V Z D R is equal to c. So, if you integrate it r d v z d r is equal to c r square by 2 plus c 1. Now, you can apply the boundary condition that at the center line v z is maximum that is at small r equal to 0 d v z d r equal to 0 that means c 1 equal to 0. So, that means you have d v z d r (coughs) 
is equal to C R by 2. So, if you integrate it then V z is equal to C R square by 4 plus C 2. Now, let us assume here that small r is equal to capital R is the radius of the pipe. This is the center line. So, the second boundary condition, boundary condition at small r is equal to capital R, V z is equal to 0. That means, C 2 is equal to minus C R square by 4. So, you have V z is equal to C by 4 into small r square minus capital R square. Okay. Now, what is the average velocity? V average, this is integral of V z into an elemental area 2 pi r dr by pi r square. This is the total volumetric flow rate, elemental areas. So, this is the circular section. If you consider at a radial location r a thin strip of width dr, then this dA is. 2 pi r dr. <coughs> so, let us integrate this V z into 2 pi r dr. So, V z is C by 4 into r square minus r square into 2 pi r dr by pi r square 0 to r. So, V average is this pi pi gets cancelled. So, C by 2 R square then integral of R cube dr is R 4 by 4 minus integral of R dr is R square by 2. So, that becomes R 4 by 2. So, this becomes what does it become? It becomes minus C R square by 8. Right? So, if you substitute this value of C here, then V z by V average is equal to 2 into 1 minus small r square by capital R square. This is the fully developed flow through a circular pipe, the velocity profile. You can see that it is very similar to the parallel plate channel case, only thing that it is uh, expressed in terms of a different coordinate system. Now, for practical engineering consideration, what is more important for us as we have discussed is not just the velocity profile, but what is the pressure drop. So, the pressure drop C, so you can write from this, this slide that this C is equal to minus 8 V average by R square and C is nothing but 1 by mu dp dz. So, this you can write 
delta p by delta z is equal to 8 minus 8 mu v average by r square. If we write this delta p now can you tell that this d p d z will it be positive or negative for a positive v average for a positive v average d p because viscosity is positive and here you have negative sign. So, positive v average will mean that you have negative d p d z. So, let us call that negative d p d z as minus delta p by delta z. So, delta p and let us say this delta z is L the length of the pipe or the length over which you are measuring the delta p is 8 mu v average L by r square. Now, you can write delta p in terms of length unit by calling h f rho g. So, why do we call delta p as h f rho g? See this delta p, why are you requiring a pumping power? In the pipe, you would have required no pumping power had there been no viscous resistance, but here you are trying to apply a pressure gradient through a pumping power so that you can maintain the flow even in the presence of viscous resistance. So, delta p you can write h f rho g where h f is a head loss due to friction. Head is energy per unit weight in hydraulics head is known as head is uh, equivalent to energy per unit weight. So, h f is equal to 8 mu v bar L by rho g r square. And v is nothing but q by pi r square. So, h f is equal to 8 mu q by pi r square into r square is r to the power 4 by rho g l and r is nothing but often in engineering you know instead of red diameter instead of radius we express it in terms of diameter r is equal to d by 2. So, h f is equal to 128 mu q l by rho g pi d to the power 4 this is known as hagen poizoli's equation. So, you require you see that the head loss is inversely proportional to the fourth power of the hydraulic diameter or the diameter of the pipe is proportional to q, proportional to l. So, all these things are uh, linearly proportional mu q l, but d is inversely real, it is inversely related to fourth power of d. So, if you make d smaller and smaller and smaller h f will be larger and larger and larger. So, to maintain the same q you require huge pumping power to drive the flow through a very narrow channel and that is one of the great challenges in driving flow of fluids through micro channels and nano channels which is itself a very interesting topic. Now, we have introduced one friction factor C f, I will introduce another friction factor f which is called as Darcy friction factor. h f is defined as f l by d 
V average square by 2 G, this F is called as Darcy friction factor. This is just a non dimensional pressure drop, the fanning's friction factor is a non dimensional wall shear stress, because in a fully developed flow the shear force is balanced by the pressure force, so this F and C F are related with each other, but let us find out F. So, H F is 8 mu V average, I am just writing one of the equations in the previous slide by rho G R square and V average is Q by pi R square. So, 8 mu Q L by pi rho G R square. Leaving this apart, we are not going to use this. So, this H F is F L by D V average square by 2 G. So, F is equal to 8 mu V average L by rho G R square into in place of D we will write 2 R into 2 G by L V average square. So, now you can see that G gets cancelled, uh, 1 V gets cancelled, L gets cancelled and 1 R also gets cancelled. So, F is equal to 8 into 2 into 2 that is 32 and R becomes D by 2. So, 32 into 2 64 by rho V average D by mu. So, F is 64 by Reynolds number. So, for fully developed flow through for steady laminar incompressible fully developed flow through a circular pipe, the friction factor versus Reynolds number is given by F equal to 64 by Reynolds number.